Hi folks, this is Jeff Howard again. I've got another video for you on film photography and film developing. Today I want to cover a camera that we found in my father-in-law's uh, car. It's been in the glove box for about 10 years. It was a Fuji disposable camera from Walmart. And uh, we uh, got that camera out and shot the remaining frames cross-processed it in rotanol like I did film <clears throat> excuse me like I did the film in a recent video and uh, I've got some pictures of that to share and a little information about the camera itself uh, first off these pictures uh, you'll see that the uh, they look a little this one looks a little red and white instead of black and white well I take uh, the film, the, the color film, and develop it in rotanol, and it comes out with the reddish cast because it's color film, so it doesn't make it completely black and white. Then when I put it in Lightroom or Photoshop, I can click on black and white and remove that reddish cast like you'll see in this next shot. Now you see quite a bit of grain there, more than we're used to seeing, and I believe that's the age of the film, <clears throat> and it could also be a little bit of it that sometimes cross-processing makes the film a little grainy, but I'm going to equate most of that to its age. This 10-year-old film stored in a glove box is far from ideal. That's like a worst-case scenario for an outdated film. Uh, the picture's not terribly unsharp, but it's not as sharp as we're used to seeing from an Icon camera, but this is a disposable camera with a plastic lens. And this camera with the film in it can be bought for about, uh, I don't know, about $8 or something in that range. And I'm going to put a screenshot up right there where you'll be able to see exactly what Walmart says about that, about price and what it's called and everything. Now, also, uh, this little camera, amazingly, with all of its age, the uh, battery in it still worked and the flash worked. So it had a industrial named battery, named industrial. I'm going to put a picture of it right there where you'll see that in the video. <clears throat> and the camera uh, itself uh, has a thumb winder on one side, and I'm going to put a picture of that in there. And what that thumb winder does is it moves the film naturally and cocks the shutter. But unlike, and this is kind of interesting, unlike a regular camera where you Put your film cassette in, pull your leader across, and then as you take pictures, you pull each frame out of the cassette. And when you're done, you take your rewind lever and wind them back into the cassette. That's not the case with these disposable cameras uh, of this type. What they do is they have pulled the film out of the cassette and wound it in the other side. And each time you take a picture, you wind that film and cock the shutter and you're winding a frame that you just shot back into the film cassette. I think that's a good thing because that way you can break the camera open when the pictures are shot and your film's inside the cassette where it's light proof. I put mine in a changing bag thinking it would be the other way. Since there's no rewind lever on the camera, I assumed I'd break it open and there'd just be a roll of film you know, that would expose the light if I didn't have a changing bag. That's not the case. So it rolls each one in as you shoot it, and then when you get done, you have a cassette of film that you can develop uh, or take to your developers, or whatever, how you prefer to do that. And uh, these little cameras are pretty handy because let's say that you're uh, going hiking or canoeing or uh, something, uh, going down to the beach where there's a lot of sand or someplace there's a lot of dirt, or maybe you're gonna go dirt bike or four wheel riding and you don't really want to take an ice camera and risk damaging it or destroying it on the trail or in the mud or whatever or on the river. Well, these little disposable cameras at uh, you know around eight dollars for one and around fourteen dollars for two of them, as you can see on the screen, they're so affordable <clears throat> that you can afford to take one with you and risk losing it. Now, some people say, "Why don't you take your iPhone?" Well, I do that. You know, we all carry our iPhones with the slot, but if I'm out doing something like that, I'm going to probably have my iPhone in some sort of protective bag. Uh, I, these little cameras, I just have that in my pocket or hanging around my neck or I just pick it up and shoot with it. I'm not terribly worried about damaging it or destroying these inexpensive cameras like I would be an iPhone or a, or a better camera. 
and uh, the real economy for that is I, I cross-process color a lot and I develop a lot of black and white film because when I use Rotanol I can develop this film for about 20 cents a row as a black and white and then I can scan it with the scanner I've already got uh, now, if I send it off, of course, it's probably going to cost about ten or fifteen dollars to get that color film developed. But I, I seldom do that. If I'm going to do that, I like to use a nice camera and shoot slides more than prints. That's just me. But uh, most of my uh, film work is on black and white, uh, Tri-X or Ilford HP5, and uh, I'm uh, aware that they make these inexpensive cameras with black and white film preloaded but they are not available around here and as near as I can tell they're not widely available anywhere so I like the idea of being able to just go into almost any uh, store like a Walmart or a Walgreens or a Quick Stop and pick up a uh, disposable camera that's got color film in it and go ahead and shoot that at 400 speed where I can use it in the daylight or maybe in the shade and it's got a flash so if I need to take some pictures at night <clears throat> around the campsite or indoors or at a birthday party. I can go ahead and do that with flash on it if I really need to. And uh, then I develop that as cross-process developing as black and white film and do that for about 20 cents a row. And uh, even at buying the camera for uh, you know about $8, I got 20 cents in the development, uh, you get uh, about 20 Four, but I think it's actually 27 photos in the rows what it says so I'm gonna call that 27 <clears throat> uh, so and what, the reason I think it's 27 is the way they load the film it's a standard 24 exposure roll I believe but what they do is they pull the film all the way out of here and it's and it's just looped and it is over here on this side <clears throat> and then as you roll it back into the canister the small size of the camera combined with the fact that you're not wasting any of the film leader getting the camera loaded in the first place gives you those uh, one or two or three extra pictures that you often won't get with a standard SLR. With those, you got the back open, you stretch the leader across, you crank it a time two to make sure it took up, and you end up at about 24 exposures. Some of them will do 25, uh, maybe, or 26, but this gives you a full 27. <clears throat> So, if you spend eight dollars and you get twenty-seven pictures, you're down to. Oh, I gotta do this in my head, so we're gonna about, we're gonna call it thirty cents or less than thirty cents a photograph, and uh, you know for me that's not bad for something worth keeping a memory of, and I and I like having my stuff on film where I can pull it back out and scan it later, you know. Uh, I think that's the real beauty of film, and I like the idea of having a camera that I can pack with me and take pictures and not risk one of my good ones uh, if the weather's bad or if I'm in some place where I don't want to damage camera. And I like the idea that the batteries are very, uh, very reliable, uh, so that you know if you don't shoot all the pictures today, uh, the flash ain't going to be dead on it. You know, you it's going to work for you, and uh, they seem reliable enough. I want to get another one and see how sharp it is uh, with fresh film in it and it's not expired. But rather than me ramble on, I'm going to go ahead and show you a few more pictures. This is another uh, red and white looking picture of the backyard and you will see some flecks in these pictures where there's perhaps I scratched the film a bit, digging it out of that camera or developing it the first time I ever took one apart. Uh, but that can be fixed in Photoshop. But there's that picture, that red and white turned into a black and white. Uh, this is a, uh, I don't have a red and white one of this, this is just a, a picture I took over here in town of our old school, thought it looked interesting and I pulled up there to a stoplight and thought, man that tree and that, pic that building looks old and interesting and that picture looks like it could have been took a long time ago I guess. Uh, this is just another picture of a street here in Somerset and one of the interesting things to me is always that when you, you shoot through a windshield or whatever, film always captures the sky. It tends to hold those highlights better than digital. You know, my experience with film is it tends to hold the sky really well for you. Uh, I'm just flipping through a few more of these. Now here's one of a red and white sky, <clears throat> or red and white photograph, down here on 27. And uh, it looks a little funny right at the very top, and that's because of the polarized section at the top of my windshield. 
But uh, it was cold that day when he was hurting. I didn't want to get out of the car. I just want to get out and just drive around at a stoplight and just shoot a picture and be able to see how that came out on the film when I got home. The sun was shining, and I wanted to take advantage of that and get the roll shot up. That same picture right there uh, turned into a black and white, so you can see what that looks like. Now this picture was actually shot over 10 years ago, back when uh, the camera was bought. This is out at church, a little Sunday school class there, a lady reading a book. This picture was uh, in the camera, and it's probably a 10-year-old picture. Uh, been captured and exposed on there all those years ago when it's recently developed. And uh, I think that's kind of fascinating <laughs> to find one like that. Well, I'll uh, get these images put in here for you. Get this video edited and get it up on YouTube. And I'm going to put a link down below to uh, the process I used to develop this film. Uh, cross-processing it in Rodenal. I've made a video on that before and I want to put that up in the in, in the notes where you'll be able to go back and find that video if you want to try cross-processing some yourself. And uh, as always, uh, thanks for tuning in watching these videos. If you have any questions or comments, please leave them below. If you like this video, hit that little thumbs up button. And uh, if you'd like to see more of this, uh, please subscribe. I'm going to keep uh, trying to crank out a few of these as I find something I think might be interesting to talk about. And as always, uh, thank you for watching, and uh, thanks for stopping in. Have a nice day. Bye-bye.